Hi, and welcome to episode 89 of the Dinner Sisters podcast, where two sisters taking on the nightly challenge of dinner. I'm Kate Schultz, living and working in Rhode Island. I'm a passionate cook and recipe collector, always thinking about my next meal. And I'm Betsy Wallace. I live, work, and raise a family in Atlanta, Georgia. I love dinner time, but can always use help planning and cooking for my family of five. I've got kids there, five, seven, and ten. I can't believe it. I, I know we said that like every time you say 10-year-olds now, I can't even stand it. It's too much. I know. <laughs> Our goal with this podcast, we want to cook a little better, learn a little bit about food, and most importantly, figure out what the heck to have for dinner. So here's how this works. Like every week, we have three recipes that we cooked and reviewed from popular food blogs, internet chefs, like anywhere I can find a recipe online. We'll have all these recipes, tips, the smorgasbord, and a shopping list on our website, which is dinnersisters.com. You can also get sent all this sent directly to your inbox by subscribing to our newsletter if you're the type of person who'd like to preview before listening. This week's recipes were Simple Fall Slaw by Minimalist Baker. Slow cooked winter squash with sage and thyme from Epicurious, and twice baked sweet potatoes with maple and walnuts from Savory Nothings. For those especially observant listeners, you may have noticed that the recipes aren't exactly dinner this episode. More like they're all kind of side dishes, which is because this is the week before Thanksgiving, and we thought we'd give you some ideas for fun sides that maybe, you know, add to your normal spread break out of a rut a little bit if you want to um, have some fun with Thanksgiving. Yeah, I thought this was a really fun idea for an episode, first of all, because Kate did not make us cook like a giant turkey um, <laughs> for the podcast. This is right. a little bit more accessible for me this time of year. <laughs> um, and it really did – It we really came up with some really fun s- sides that even if you don't use them on your Thanksgiving table, they will That's really true. work well for any fall – kind of meal you're making. So, so I thought this was a, a great one. First up, we have a simple fall slaw by Minimalist Baker. And a little shout out to a certain salad loving friend of mine who absolutely needs something fresh and green at her Thanksgiving table. And I give her nothing but grief about this. But here I am, kind of a salad for Thanksgiving side. And this isn't a green one, but it is fresh. So to make it, you shred a couple beets and apple radishes, carrots, and broccoli in a mandolin. If you don't quite know what I'm talking about, they're these kind of flat slicer shredder things that have a really sharp blade. And I know that because did some damage with it. Mm. But um, you can also use a knife if you don't have that or just a grater. But a mandolin makes it really pretty, those little like julienne matchsticks. You also finely slice an onion. You pile all that in a bowl and you toss it with a dressing made from tahini, apple cider vinegar, lemon juice, olive oil, little maple syrup, salt and pepper. You mix it all up and you chill that for at least an hour and you serve it with toasted sunflower seeds. So Betsy, I know you had to go out and get a mandolin just for this. We talked about this. So mm-hmm. how did this work up? Yeah, I um, did not have a problem with the mandolin, which was great. Nice. I just followed the instructions and it was fine. Um, and the slaw itself was really good. So we had it, um, I chilled it for about an hour the first time we had it. I had it, and then we had it the same night. So I made it at Mm -hmm. like four and we ate it at six and we thought it was okay. And then I actually had it, this, that was several days ago. I had it today. This is probably day like three or four. It's been in my fridge, to be honest. And it was really good. We just squeezed some more lemon on top of it. And it held up really well. And I thought the flavors were great. You feel very healthy. Yeah. It feels like a nice <laughs> – you do. I mean, it's just – you know, it feels like one of those I'm doing something great for my body salads. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had the same thing. I think this would benefit from doing it several hours or even like the night before for a lunch or something like that. I thought yeah. after an hour it was good. And then as it like hit like 24 hours, it was great. And then after Mm -hmm. that, like, but I, I ate this whole thing like for lunch and some dinners and never Mm -hmm. got sick of it. It was so, it's just so fresh tasting, but also very fall tasting for me because it tastes like those beets and the carrots. You know what I mean? Yeah, the beets and carrots and apples all kind of make it like Mm -hmm. a nice, and it was pretty. I mean, it's a very pretty slaw too. It was pretty. It was. So I just like kept eating it. I also, I couldn't, I didn't find radishes in the farmer's market because they're out of season. And I was like, well, why not use these, like, they call them salad turnips. Have you ever seen these? No, I haven't. They look like big radishes, 
And they're like okay. fresh, crunchy turnips. So they don't have quite the heat as radishes do, but the same kind mm-hmm. of texture. I yeah. use those. That was great. So there you go. I think you could pretty much swap within that same family as much. I, I used a golden beet because I thought mm-hmm. that I picked up a regular beet, but I used a golden beet. That was great. Um, it was a huge bowl of slaw. Yeah. <laughs> so this yes. will be perfect if you do use it as a Thanksgiving slide for a bigger side, slide, side for a bigger crowd. Um, this will definitely do it, you know? Yeah, I can imagine this on a Thanksgiving plate for sure, really freshening up the meal. I give this a five out of five. I just loved it. Yeah, I am with you on this, Kate. I think when we used it, you know, like later in the week, we did just keep freshening it up with like a little extra squeeze of lemon. I love that lemon. idea. Um, and that kept the, fa- the the flavors very bright. Um, but I thought, especially with the red beets and the apples and all that kind of stuff, it just really hit the spot in that fall flavors, but not so rich and heavy, which mm. I loved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So next up, we have slow cooked winter squash with sage and thyme from Epicurious. Squash is one of those classic Thanksgiving dishes. You know, I feel mm-hmm. like you usually have it on the table. It's almost like a given for most people. But, you know, sometimes I, it's like, ah, oh, you know, we just roast it again or mash it. And I liked this recipe because it was simple, but a little different mm-hmm. and a little bit decadent with all the olive oil it uses. So it's really simple, comes together very quickly. You slice up a delicata swa- squash or, or the butternut squash if you've got it. Um, delicata, they're kind of, they're yellow and green. They're kind of long. They're about a pound or so. Mm-hmm. In any case, you, Slice that up into into slices, toss it in a two-quart baking dish with a quarter cup of olive oil, which is a little bit of olive oil, fresh yeah. thyme and fresh sage. And then you roast it through 30 to 45 minutes until the squash is tender. And I have to say, I was surprised how good this smelled while it was roasting. It just was like really delicious smelling. Uh, how'd this go for you? I liked this. So I think I told you this. I had a butternut squash, so I just did it with a butternut squash. Mm. Mm-hmm. At my house. And I thought it was a really fun presentation, too. I mean, oh, yeah. I was not, I'll say, I thought it was good. I wasn't like, whoa, this is something crazy. I never would have expected this to all come together and be, you know, like so different right. in a right. way that some things kind of tend to be for us. Like, occasionally we'll come across these, like, ooh, surprising. I think that you get exactly what you might expect. And it's a delicious way to roast squash, and it makes for a really – like I think for Thanksgiving too especially, this makes for a really pretty side dish on Mm, a plate. mm -hmm. You know, like – Yeah. And it's delicious. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And and the quarter cup of olive oil really makes it like a rich tasting dish. Mm -hmm. You know, and it takes it from like a regular roast of squash to something that's like Thanksgiving or a dinner party, you know, like a holiday Mm -hmm. kind of feel to it. Yeah. And if you've already got a couple complicated dishes going on, like this is a great one. (laughs) You know, if you're already doing like 20 crazy things with your your turkey, Mm -hmm. like this is literally you could just toss it and go, you know, takes it doesn't take a lot of time. I also, you know, since it's not Thanksgiving for us, we I made this with some roasted chicken thighs, which was delightful. Mm-hmm. And then I had some of those honey nut squash. You know, the sm- they look like someone shrunk a butternut squash. Yeah, I think I got one of those yeah. in my Misfit Markets thing that I did this week. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I mm-hmm. used that and did the same thing again. Fun. I like scaled it down because I didn't have as much squash. And mm-hmm. that was delightful because you can kind of like just shove it in the oven and walk away and it just does its thing um and then here's an extra special thing so there's a place in providence that makes these amazing like gourmet too expensive sandwiches but Mm -hmm. they're delicious got their vegetarian sandwich and it was delicata squash a little bit of feta and some other things going on in there and so i had extra delicata squash i didn't i was like eh, i wasn't really into it as a side anymore and then i remember that sandwich so i made a sandwich with it I had some sharp cheddar cheese and some of my homemade bread, delicata squash. It was really good. Oh, I bet. That's a great Thanksgiving leftover hint there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is the kind of recipe I also, Betsy, would recommend to like a cooking newbie who's going to like bring Mm -hmm. something for a side. Yes. Yes. You know? So I agree, though. It wasn't super surprising, but it was really solid. This is a four to five because... Honestly, it's a lot of oil, olive oil for me to make like every day, um, mm-hmm. but it's still really good. What was your rating? Yeah, I'm I am also with you on that. It's definitely a four out of five because it was um, 
I think if you're like uh, exactly what you said, if you are a pro cook, but you just want some of these dishes to be easy, but look mm-hmm. great and taste great, this is definitely for you. And if you're a newbie, you can pull this off. And those slices of squash, again, I just saw the presentation on this. And that richer pretty. thing with the oil. It was just pretty. It was just a really mm-hmm. pretty thing. And it was like a walk away. Like put it, it in the oven, was. walk away. Yeah, which was mm-hmm. great. Unlike our next recipe, Kate, which is <laughs> the Jeez. last recipe of the episode, twice baked sweet potatoes with maple and walnuts from Savory Nothings. Tell us how you do this. Okay. Well, no, you can't walk away because that's a twice baked potato. I don't know what you yeah. want. All right. Yeah. So this recipe is a twist on like a regular roasted sweet potato or like a twice baked potato. It's kind of the mash up the two, right? So mm-hmm. like any twice baked potato, you first you roast your sweet potato in the oven and then when it's nice and soft, just whole, like you just poke some, you know, holes in it, shove it in the oven and away you go. When it's nice and soft, you split it in half, scoop out the insides and you put that in a bowl and you just mix it up with some Greek yogurt, a bit of pumpkin pie spice and maple syrup. You pile that mashed up back into the sweet potato shells, right? And then you top it with walnuts and brown sugar and you bake it again at 400 until they're like nice and toasty. The nuts have toasted, the brown sugar is caramelized. These were really pretty, I thought. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. it's kind of fun. How did everyone like them, Betsy? So I ended up, did, uh, kind of, because it's sort of a flexible looking recipe, because mm. you're just kind of taking everything out and mixing the yogurt in and that type of yeah. thing. I made, um, I think this recipe calls for four, and I ended up making six, because I oh, thought, nice. you know, we're just going to have them for dinner, and this probably does not need to be super exact. And it yeah. definitely did not need to be super exact. Uh, but I thought, so I did six kind of smallish ones in a nine by 13 mm. oh, and i actually cool. yeah and i actually um had just these sweet potatoes with that slaw as oh. a meal one night um wow kind of like a nice vegetarian meal and i'm telling like mm-hmm. people were not complaining that they weren't full because like a big good sized sweet potato yeah mixed with greek yogurt topped with walnuts i mean that's, that's like super a fair f- amount of filling like a little bit of protein a <laughs> yeah. little bit of yeah. healthy fat yeah and, 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 the, and the topping makes the topping makes it super good, like a little yeah. candied topping. But it wasn't too, too too sweet, you know. It wasn't, and we you I left out. You can put some butter in the topping too, and I ended up just like mm. doing the walnuts with a little bit of brown sugar yeah. and kind of left that out to make it because it was a weeknight. I mean, you know, um, yeah, right. <laughs> this is but, not I mean, the Thanksgiving side. It, You're like, yeah. okay, we can back it off a little bit. Yes, but I think it would make it extra delicious. Um, I was surprised how much you could take the taste the Greek yogurt tang come through in these. Me too. Mm-hmm. But I kind of liked it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I thought that was nice. And so, yeah, it was just fun because everyone got a little sweet potato on their um, plate with a little, you know, big side of little slaw. slaw and- <laughs> I mean, that was like fiber-tastic meal. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fiber-tastic <laughs> meal. Yes. Sure was. It was. Yeah, it was good. It keeps you full. <laughs> keeps you yeah. full and going. Yeah. I, you know, this recipe for me, four to five, it's a little bit of work, you know, it's mm-hmm. a little bit like extra, but I think it'd be super fun even, you know, for Thanksgiving, a little twist on the sweet potato. Um, and, but also something that would be fun to make for a weeknight or maybe a little having some people over for dinner. Yeah. I did make my potatoes ahead of time. So oh, good call. I baked them first I and done then that. like at f- five thirty or whenever I um split them open and I was even thinking maybe I should have baked them, scooped everything out, made the filling, and then you could really just Oh gosh, yeah. Or reassemble. I, I, I was that. thinking like at the supermarket you buy twice baked potatoes, you can buy them in the like sure. the pre made things. So this could be like a meal prep thing if you were gonna do this on a Sunday and have them later in the week. You could Or if you're going somewhere for Thanksgiving, right? Mm-hmm. You could just make them and then do that last step at someone's house. Like yes. use the broiler or something like that. I think that might be really delicious. What was your what was your rating? Okay, so my rating's a four out of five on this, like a high four out of five on mm. this. Mm-hmm. I thought they were fun. And also kind of like we've talked about before, smaller Thanksgivings. This is kind of like a fun individual portion thing because sometimes you don't yes. just want like a nine by 13 of potato sweet potato casserole. i know <laughs> i have done that before for prior thanksgiving it never goes well never goes well and you could scale down too right i think you could just like scale down everything and just make two sweet potatoes mm-hmm. yeah this is a fun one mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i liked it 
Okay, wrapping it up, Betsy. Let's talk about our winners. For mm-hmm. me, this episode, the winner was the fall slaw. I mean, it was just really delicious. It just hit the spot for me for some reason. Although I'm disappointed because I might have to take back all my teasing about a Thanksgiving salad. Yeah, it was really, and it looked just Thanksgiving-y. I mean, I just can't, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, mine's going to be the sweet potatoes because oh, nice. even though they were like a little bit of extra work, I was surprised that those felt so filling to my family. And I was like, well, geez, this could be a, um, like, it's fun for this time of year, but. Yeah. You know. Why not? This, Break it out in January. Yeah, exactly. So it's fun. And all, yeah. All those foods, too, in there are very, like, going to be on in the markets through winter time. Do you know yeah, what I mean? exactly. You can make those slaws all year round. Like Kate, all we sh- winter long. Yeah, exactly. We should mention that slaw um, on her recipe notes. She says it's gluten-free and vegan. Even better. So if you have those dietary needs at Thanksgiving, that's always good to have a recipe in your back pocket. So I thought For that was very sure. useful. Yeah. So if you're going to go to a Thanksgiving where you need to bring a side, you can always check out our show notes and the grocery list for all of these recipes at dinnersisters.com. And we've got all the other tips that we talked about, including scaling up, scaling down, maybe making these potatoes ahead. And if you'd like to chat more with us, you can always ask to join our Dinner Sisters Facebook group. We are at Dinner Sisters Podcast on Facebook. Just type that in, look for us, and we'll invite you to join the party. Okay, before we head to the smorgasbord, a break. So today on the smorgasbord, we have two fun things. Some listener tips about cooking a giant turkey and an <laughs> international... my favorite. It was. It was my favorite thread in the Facebook group the whole week. And an international cookie exchange that I'm really excited about, Kate. So yeah. I'm going to start... Take us with, off with a giant turkey tips, Betsy. Yes. Which, <laughs> you know what, Kate? I... I, I will can't. tell you, this was so hilarious. So Melissa in the Facebook group said she was thinking about Thanksgiving. She went and dug up our episode from last year in which we reviewed a turkey breast yes. side. So like a smaller portion, you know, turkey for two kind of thing was our was our theme. And she wrote this hilarious post about how she has a small family and but loves buying giant turkeys <laughs> and just go into town. <laughs> And it was so funny because so many people chimed in and said, There are a lot of giant turkey lovers. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, okay, fair enough. I mean, our own mother is a giant turkey lover. She loves herself a good turkey sale. And she does. So she and our dad will buy like just a giant turkey and keep it in the freezer and have that. Just break it out in February. In February, just the two of them. And then, and then they'll do the whole, you know, bag it up into different things and you know it's great way more so, organized than we are yeah so some of the the tips we got from um what you can do with this giant turkey if you go out and get one on sale is making bone broth in the instant pot making some pot pies for your freezing freezer shredding mm. like cooking and shredding this maybe buying four or five of these giant oh my gosh. cheap turkeys what? and putting them <laughs> into your f- chest freezer and then you can kind of do like this is what our parents would do and then you like take one out at throughout the year um you know what people are saying they love turkey soup they think turkey okay. broth is superior to chicken broth kate you know what i did today <laughs> i was well, i know shopping. mom i know mom is visiting so what did you yeah. do our parents are visiting so i went to kroger with our dad and I definitely bought two 15 pound turkeys. Oh my God. <laughs> Cause they were like, you it's shouldn't contagious. just have one. You should have they bought, two. You bought two. Oh my yeah. goodness. Because this what? is what's going to happen. They're going to, my mom is going to make one this week while we're gone. Cause we're going to Rome. Oh, I'm taking Mada to Rome, but she's going to be here with the kids. And so she was like, I'm going to make this turkey for you. And I'm going to make some bags of uh, like frozen, like shredded things. And we're going to put it mm. into different, you know, like break down this whole turkey and make you some freezer meals and, um, oh my gosh! I mean, so kind of again. I mean, this is sort of a theme with me, right? I'm so you like, have thirty pounds of turkey right now. I have thirty pounds of turkey, but also like <laughs> mom is gonna kind of do all the work on this for me, which is like the theme of your life. And, I mean, <laughs> yes. were we just talking about how you claim to fry chicken? 
for this summer fried chicken episode yeah okay um, anyways so that's Must my nice. um that's my giant turkey story i don't know i'm gonna get on the bandwagon oh my gosh i mean i we've talked about my like hatred of my three quarters fridge and i have a three quarters freezer because i have a three quarters fridge so there's no way i am like getting a 15 pound turkey and having anywhere to put it to be honest you could you could but plug I'm, in a giant chest freezer like in oh just living put room. it <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then <laughs> I could have a giant chest freezer, but perhaps not a boyfriend. So it might be, yes. <laughs> might be yeah. a choice. Yeah. Might be a choice. Um, yeah, I don't, that's not going to happen. But I, I, I love that you've got 30 pounds of turkey and that's super fun. All right. More up my alley. Yeah. Let's hear it. Yeah. Is, um, we're a really big fan of fans of Jules Kitchen. We've, we've cooked her recipes before. She has that stewed beans with, um, sausage meatballs. That was just so amazing for our winter mm-hmm. dinner party last year. So she, we follow her on Instagram and she just posted, I had no idea she does this, a international cookie exchange, which yeah. is so fun. So fun. I mean, I'm really excited. So from her Instagram post, she said she does a cookie swap and, they have had um, more than 70 participants from Italy, Canada, France, Hungary, England, and the U.S. And she wants to surpass those 70 participants. So if you're the type of person who bakes Christmas cookies, I definitely am. Um, you might want to check this out. We'll put a link to it in our show notes. And you can get um, what you do is they'll match you with two people from your country. And then before Christmas, you'll get two parcels of Christmas cookies. So you swap with two other people and two other people send you Christmas cookies back. Um, so this is really fun. Just sign up. And if you like to bake and maybe ship off some cookies, spread a little holiday cheer. I thought, what a fun thing to do. So we will put links to that in our show notes. If you want to participate in Jules Kitchen Cookie Exchange, I know I'm going to. So if you do, um, you'll have to let us know because we'll check out your cookies and see see what happens. Yeah, I think that's so fun. All right, so coming up next week, we have a very special Thanksgiving week dinner party episode. So I went to Foxfire, which is kind of in North Georgia, and cooked over a wood stove. And we talked about their new cookbook that they just put out. And it's all about kind of Appalachian cooking and foodways. And it's got a very strong food historian, kind of early American cooking bent, which I know we've got some some fans of here Mm -hmm. yeah i'm still jealous about this like it was all i could do not to just fly down for the day because it seemed like so much fun and it is going to be a great episode all right so that's what's for dinner this week see you next time on the dinner sisters we'll save a spot at the table for you would you like a little dinner in your inbox every week subscribe to our newsletter by going to our website at dinnersisters.com for show notes and other fun stuff If you've got some dinner ideas, we would love to hear from you. We love getting your emails. We are at dinnersisterspodcast at gmail.com. Lastly, as per usual, if you like what you're hearing, please review and subscribe or tell a friend. That's actually how most people get to know podcasts is through word of mouth. So thanks and happy eating. (laughs) 